These are statistics I'm giving you that your children and grandchildren and children unborn are going to have to deal with when they're our age. And you young people in the audience, you should be furious because we are denying you the same liberty, the same opportunity that our parents gave to us. We are going to enslave you to the state financially and legally in ways you cannot possibly imagine right now. Now, I want you to listen to this. This information is based on the Congressional Budget Office's long-term outlook released in June. Each household share of the federal debt will climb to $382,000 over the next 25 years, an additional $287,000 compared with today's levels. So if you have an 8-year-old kid, 3-year-old, 12-year-old, they'll be young adults, be in their 20s and 30s. Over the next 20 years, high debt levels will lower the U.S.'s cumulative economic output by roughly $29 trillion. In other words, we're impoverishing ourselves. We're impoverishing the next generation and the generation after that. That's what we're giving them. By 2037, 25 years from now, the federal government will spend $2.7 trillion per year in interest payments alone. More than a quarter of our entire federal budget that year. Greater than the total federal budget in 2003. By 2025, 13 years from now, mandatory health care spending, Social Security, and the interest costs will consume 100% of the revenues that the federal government takes in. Mandatory health care like Obamacare, Social Security, and interest. That's it. Oh, what about money for education? What about money for this? What about money for that? The Congressional Budget Office also warned that, quote, growing debt would increase the probability of a sudden fiscal crisis during which investors would lose confidence in the government's ability to manage its budget and the government would thereby lose its ability to borrow at affordable rates. Quote, unquote, what are we doing to our children and our grandchildren? And 25% women in Ohio by 25% support this. According to the Washington Compost and CBS, the president's budget does not, contrary to his endless lies, pay down our debt, quote-unquote. Instead, debt would increase to more than $25 trillion in 10 years under the president's plan. It's $16 trillion today. He adds over $9 trillion in 10 years. If we're lucky, your kids, those kids you take to soccer practice, little league, swim team, your kids, who you would die for, who you would do anything for, we're destroying them. They have no idea. And we know who's pushing this. And we know who won't stop it. Want to hear something else? This you haven't heard. The U.S. debt per household, right now it's $138,000, is more than double what it is in Spain today, which is $64,000. Have you looked at the news today? I know it's hard, but every now and then, did you take a peek? They're rioting in Spain, just like they were rioting in Greece, just like they were rioting in Portugal just like they were rioting in Great Britain. Just like they're going to riot here if we don't put an end to this as soon as possible. Over just the next five years, five years, 
U.S. debt per household is on course to jump another $40,000 in five years to $176,000, while Spain's is on course to increase by 20000 to 84000 Do you have $176,000? You better start saving. That doesn't even include off-budget items, like entitlements. It doesn't even include that, which is into the tens of trillions of dollars and will never be paid back. If your husband were doing this to your children, what would you think? If your neighbor were doing this to your children, what would you think? If your baseball, soccer coach, swim coach were doing this to your children, what would you think? You'd be disgusted. You'd fight it. You'd protect your children. Well, all I can say is wake the hell up. Because your children are being threatened by the greatest political child abuser in modern American history. Mark Levin. In my view, it's not just bad economics. It's immoral for us to pass these burdens on to coming generations. So what do I do? Well, for, first you've got to end the deficit and then start building, accumulating, uh, if you will, uh, reserves and, and growing. That's what we did. Well, most states figure out how to do this. They balance their budget. And in my state, I came in, we had about a $3 billion budget gap. We balanced the budget. Then we began building a rainy day fund. It was over $2 billion when I left. That's how you do it. So what do we do here? I have three, three things I do to, one, get rid of the deficit. And then let me tell you how we're also going to go on to start pulling down the debt. Three three pro approaches. Number one, we're going to get rid of programs we don't need. My test is that this. I look at every program and say, is this so critical as a program it's worth borrowing money from China to pay for it? And on that basis, we're going to get rid of some programs like Obamacare and some others. <laughs> Number two, we're going to take a lot of programs and send them back to the states where they can be run more efficiently and with less fraud and abuse. And number three, we're going to skiddy down the size of the federal workforce that remains with attrition to make sure it's more productive. And so when Democrats say, oh, just raise taxes, what they don't understand is that raising taxes slows down growth. And it's like a dog chasing its tail. You're never going to get to the balanced budget by raising taxes. You have to encourage growth. That's why our policies are focused on, one, bringing down spending, and two, encouraging growth. That's why we champion small business. Make it. That's why we champion our energy resources. We want to grow this economy and cut federal spending. You do those two things, we get to a balanced budget, and ultimately, we get rid of this debt. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. I, now, this guy... That's it. I, I want to hear what he has to say on this topic. I mean, he's been working on this for the last 14 years. I can't really top that. It, it is, that is the magic secret. Pro-growth economics to get people back to work. Going from collecting an unemployment check to creating and building businesses to having a paycheck. That brings in more revenues through economic growth. Cut spending, reform government programs so that they are paid for. The problem is we've had decades of politicians from both political parties making lots of empty promises to voters to get reelected. And what will happen if we have a debt crisis is those empty promises become broken promises with painful consequences unless we act. Turn on your TV when you get home. Look at Europe. That's what happened. They made all these empty promises. They got a debt crisis. Now they're in recession. Now they're slashing health and retirement benefits for current seniors, raising taxes, slowing down the economy. Young people don't have jobs. We need to prevent and preempt that, and that's what this is designed to do. Get people back to work cut spending, reform government, prevent us from being Europe, and then we'll be the port in the storm in the global economy. America will be the place you want to create jobs, you want to have your company. This is the engine of economic growth we've had before. We can turn it around, and if we do that, then we'll get our debt under control and get it paid off, and our kids and our grandkids will have a debt-free nation, just like our parents. They took on the challenges in their generation. We do that, and we revive the American idea and the American legacy.